Okay, hi everybody. Um, it's the third video and I wasn't going to do another one till you guys started watching them, but I realized I skipped a bunch of stuff. Well, not skipped, just uh, didn't mention. Um, so finishing your hoop. Obviously this is not the design. This is a different design, but um, I haven't, I still haven't finished stitching like the, the actual design. We'll do that soon. I'm almost done with it. Anyways, I want to show you how to finish the hoops. So this one I still haven't finished. Um, so I'm going to finish it for you on camera. Ta-da! So there's lots of different ways people do this. Sometimes people will do like a running stitch with needle and thread and then cinch the back together. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just Google it. Um, Google ways to back hoops. Like All this information that I'm telling you is already on the internet. Um, I, I'm self-taught. I just like randomly found this stuff too. So no big surprises out there. Okay. So this is how I do it though. I trim the back up and glue the edge. Um, so I'll just show you what that looks like. Um, so this is pretty much how much I leave. If you have too much, it'll overlap on the back. And sometimes depending on your fabric, you can actually see it through the front. So you definitely don't want that. We also don't want too little because then it'll be harder to glue down. So there's a balance. Also, I pulled this hoop out so I could tell you a little bit about the staining here. So obviously you can leave your hoop as it is, the natural look. You can paint it with acrylics if you want like a hot pink hoop or whatever. You can roll it in glitter. I've done that before. You can do whatever the heck you want. You can bedazzle it. Um, I bought this stuff on on Amazon. I shop there a lot. Can you guys tell? Um, this is the only thing I've tried. So I know there's plenty of other options out there, but this is just what I've used. You just kind of paint it on and then rub it off. And then I have a, a spray I spray it with to fix it. Um, so then this is the glue I like to use. It's just that tacky glue you used growing up, right? So I just put a squirt all the way around and then go around like this to kind of press it in. Another thing you can do after that is if you want to cut a piece of fabric that fits, this is for a seven inch hoop, you would, you know, put it in here to make it look prettier. Um, I used to do that. Now I just leave my hoops open in the back um, for convenience. <laughs> it just saves me a step, you know. I'll also come in here and trim these little doohickeys. But um, yeah, I'm all about convenience. So that's it. That's how I back my hoops. Once it's glued, you can take this top part off too. So that's even a cool way to display your hoops too. It'll be round, but it actually won't have a frame. So that's kind of interesting. Look, um, I wanted to show you guys this. This is a hoop from a little over a year ago. The reason I wanted to show you this is um, the design's kind of weird. The stitching isn't bad. I mean, this rose is kind of funky, and um, my lettering is pretty not great. You can see I, I did the lettering, and I didn't like it, and I ripped it all out, and I redid it. Um, anyways, this is the hoop that hangs in my studio. Um... And I've been stitching, I stitch a couple hours every day for the last year plus. So, you know, just like everything else, it, this just takes practice, guys. So, if yours does not look like mine the first time you do it, well, it shouldn't. That would be insane. So, give yourself a break and practice. Okay, I want to talk about a couple other options for tracing your design onto your fabric. I, I love and hate this stuff. Like, I love the convenience of it. This goes in your printer. You can, you know, either copy onto here or print onto here the design. Um, and it's a sticker. Hopefully I can actually separate it on camera for you. I swear to God, it's a sticker. It's a sticker. Oh, yeah, there it is. That just sticks right on your fabric. Okay? I'm pretending my hand is fabric. And then you stitch through it. When you're all done, it is water soluble. I I love the convenience of that, but I have had um, problems actually removing it when done. If you're doing a piece like this and you're you're doing a lot of satin stitch over 
uh, this stuff, it, you're, you know, it's probably going to still be under there. And then getting it out between tiny spaces like this, it's just, it's like trying to clean little boogers out. It's just a nightmare. So if you're doing a more simple design, for example, um, you're going to have better luck. So I don't know. I found that I didn't end up saving any time because I just had to spend all that time like cleaning the boogers out. You know what I mean? Like I may as well have put in the effort ahead of time and gone really slow with my tracing, you know. Uh, so here's another option. It's just tracing paper. It's, it's carbon. So you can see I've used this one before and you can use it many, many, many times. You put it carbon side down onto your fabric and then your design would go on top. And then um, you just trace it. Let me grab a design. It wasn't really ready. Let's see. So here's, here's the original on my tracing paper. That's how I like to do my sketches. So you would just, you'd wanna tape your design onto the fabric so it doesn't move around, you know, as you're tracing. Um, the carbon paper can move around. That doesn't matter at all. And then you're just going to trace with a pen. I like to use a different color pen than my design so I know where I've been. Like I'd use like a red ballpoint and just trace. Just go slow. Take your time. And then when you're done, you know, you'll lift it off and your design will be blue on your fabric. This also comes with yellow, which I think would probably work pretty well on like a dark fabric. I haven't tried it yet, but um, there's also iron-on options, which I have never tried. Like I bought this pencil, which obviously I've never used, but you know, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of different options. You know, you can do some research on the internet. You should, you can go into a craft store and ask them what they suggest, you know, just cause it's not what I do doesn't mean it's not right or it wouldn't work for you. So do what works best guys. Um, here's that thread heaven I was talking about in one of the previous videos. I did actually start using it and it does feel really nice. It's basically like conditioner for your thread you know like when you're when you condition your hair how it's all like silky and doesn't tangle oh, it's lovely it's just one other thing to remember to use though is all um if you're having a hard time uh threading a needle these are pretty handy tools um i actually don't use this i bought it to use it but i <laughs> i usually just grab a different needle if i'm having a hard time so you know if you have a really thick piece of floss and a really tiny eye of your needle, it's just not gonna happen. Um, so I like to buy the assortment packs of needles. So that way I always have like, you know, what I need around, you know, because sometimes I'm just gonna use a tiny single thread. Other times I'm gonna use all six strands or if I'm using silk, you know, it's it's good to have a variety. So if if you're not happy with the needles you got in your kit, I suggest going to the store and getting just getting a variety pack and seeing what works for you. Um, if you've seen these, these will keep your little uh, bobbins together. Where's the hinge? Here we go. So you can put all your, your bobbins of whatever project you're working on and snap it together. Sounds cool in theory. I never actually use them, but that's what those are for if you're ever wondering. <laughs> and then these cool thimbles was the last thing I wanted to show you. I actually haven't used them in a while. But I was doing a project where um, I was getting like calluses, like my fingers were hurting. And this this was really nice. I used one on my my finger here and one on my thumb. And I think my cat, <laughs> I think my cat ran off with the other one. I only have one right now. So, but these are nice. They're silicone. Anywho, I think that's all I have in my pile. Yeah, oh, I have this. This is actually the... Um, the color palette, it changed a little bit before I came out with the pattern and kit. Um, but if you're ever working with some colors that you really like and you don't want to forget what they are, I just cut out little strips and put a little bit of glue there. And I don't know. So I have a couple of these cards laying around so, <laughs> so I can remember what my palettes are. Because um, I was just writing down the numbers, but sometimes it's hard because like, the numbers don't mean anything. So if you're trying to find that number, like what that, you know. That doesn't mean anything unless you kind of know the color. I have mine organized by rainbow. So that's it. So once again, um, you know, I did watch through the, the videos. I I was getting tired in the last one where I was stitching. And I, I tend to um, hold the hoop against my boobs to stitch. 
um, as like a stabilizer, so I was a little off camera towards the end, which I apologize for. I have a, um, a clamp here I can use to keep the hoop still. So if you guys would like to see any of the stitches redone closer or with the stabilized hoop so it's more on camera and not jiggly, um, if you want to see more of any particular stitch, let me know. Uh, comment below or send me an email. Are you tired of watching my hands dance? Okay, end of film. Thank you.